Good afternoon everyone, this is Victor Ling from New Sky Migration Canberra. Um, welcome to my live section for this week. So uh, this week we'd like to talk about the metrics points. Um, finally we're starting to see significance or a very obvious uh, point drop of the metric system. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, I say I did a calculation with you guys uh, in that video. I said in order to issue all the nomination available for ACT government, uh, for each invitation alone, uh, uh, the government had to issue roughly about 600 uh, places on each invitation round. So on the 23rd of January, uh, government issued over 600 places. Uh, it's, it's merely based on calculation. So on the 20, 23rd January 1, um, this is how it looked like. So the, the government issued 200 invitation round to 180. This is one of the highest invitation round. Uh, for this financial year for 190 onshore applicants. So what you see is with 200 invitation giving to 190 onshore ones, the points started to draw pretty much across in all the occupations. And there are a few groups see more obvious uh, point differences, which we're going to talk about later. In the meantime, uh, the government you know, continued to giving uh, you know, big invitation run to offshore applicants, particularly 491, because 190 we all know you need to have a job offer. So the challenge is the job offer. Uh, for 491, there are 303 invitation to 491. So again, we're starting to see uh, overseas applicants for 491 uh, experience very low points. So this is what happens when uh, some categories having uh, more places uh, of invitation, the points were starting to drop. So uh, then that brings the questions, with the 600 places, roughly about 600 invitation or uh, any invitation around uh, above this figure will continue to happen in the, in the following months. My invitation, yes, that's something we're going to see. We'll continue to see big invitation around at least each month. Um, uh, maybe what will happen is some invitation around, pro probably let's say if there are two invitation around within a month, and the, the government will do a big invitation around and a small one. The small one you can take as an adjustment, so, but the big ones will continue to see. Uh, this is the only way they, they'd be able to use all the uh, nomination allocations. So what, what does the point look like now? Um, we, we have to go for, for example, the IT group. Currently, we're even starting to see uh, IT occupations uh, going back to under 90 points. 90 is pretty much uh, across in most of the occupations. So 90 points we're starting to see for 190 uh, for IT. Remember, it used to be 100 points, 105 but now it's back on uh, under 90 points. For engineering as well, for engineering group, we're also starting to see uh, lower points. For electrical, it's 75. For electronic, it's, it's, it's 85. For um, even civil engineering groups, it's 90 points. So again, most of the occupation has gone back to 90 points. The point was continue to drop as we expected. Uh, we, we, I was I was assuming IT group and uh, engineering group were starting to point going back to 85, 75, even 70 points uh, by the end of this financial year. Uh, what about accountant? Accountant points remains, as I, as I keep on mentioning, that uh, most of occupation will experience point, significant point drops, but then probably accountant will drop, but then very, very slowly. Uh, even for this 23rd January 1, accountant for 491 is still 110, for 190 is 150. So, it's very high, we have to say that, it's, it's, it's very high because there are a lot of applications in the queue. I know there are not so many uh, new applicants or applications anymore, but in the, the historical ones are still there. There are lots of invitation, uh, application numbers there. In the meantime, it's about uh, how the government controls invitation, and I believe the people in charge still will not give a lot of invitation figures to accounting because if they do so, they, they can use a lot of places. So they rather to uh, distribute the allocation to IT, engineering, and the other occupations. So this is something very good to know. So this is another a question we get in, in the past probably two weeks when people started to realize points of job. Uh, there are some people saying, I can I get a phone invitation straight away uh, if I submit one, but I don't want a phone invitation. And I can see the points between 491 and 190, it's only five points. Uh, uh, you know, some of the group, it's just five tons. Civil engineering, for example, 75, so 85 for 491, 90 points for 190. What should I do? Uh, my, my suggestion is, this is really a case by case situation. Uh, if you are, con you, you are confident you're continuing meeting all the criteria, means continuing employment, 
and you have no uh, uh, you know, points will drop uh, in the following months, not just metric points, but also EOI points. For example, if your English is about to expire in two weeks and you have no confidence in getting the same level English test in the following months, then probably Formula 1 will be realistic. realistic. But then if all the criteria will remain quite stable in the following months, mainly, mainly in the following six months till the end of financial year, and if the gap between Formula 1 and is very narrow, I would definitely suggest you to stay there, hang on there, to have, to have a look if you got a chance for 190. Because we know now the split between 491 and the 190 is 50-50. So the, it's equal chance. And if the points is only five points, differences, I would definitely expect the points drop back to within your scope of reach. So um, that's one of the suggestions because I, 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 I didn't do this kind of advice in the past probably one and a half years. I, I tell the clients, be a realist, they get what you can, what, what you've been offered. Don't wait uh, uh, to see if anything better will be given to you. But now, uh, you know, based on the, the current situation, I think that yes, there are some chances for people looking for 190 if you don't like 491. Of course, if you, your point is not very competitive or the gap between 491 and 190, it's, it's huge. Then to be realistic, take your 491, okay? So this is something, this is a, Pretty much the first month we're starting to see a uh, point to drop significantly. This is January, and we we got February, March till the uh, till June. So there are many invitation rounds, uh, uh, you know, uh, in front of us, and we see the points starting to drop. So that's something good to hear. Finally, we're starting to see uh, the point back to uh, uh, you know uh, at least a more reasonable scale. Um, so and this is the things uh, you know uh, you know that deter people to can to camera in, in the past six months and 12 months, the points is way too high. If any people who, who decide to move to Canberra, they're gonna do a calculation and they're gonna see their points as 20 points or 30 points uh, uh, you know, under the cutting off points. And, and, and that means you have to stay for two years, even three years in order to catch up that 20, 30 points. And in the meantime, every, every other state governments, it's pretty much saying, if you do this, I give you an invitation as quick as a few weeks or uh, within a very few months. But then if you're talking about two to three years, it's not very appealing now uh, to the potential applicant. So, but once the point drop back to a reasonable scale, and if the interstate people starting to realize, I can, you know, all I have to do is just be in Canberra for six months, then I will get 70 points or 65 points. Then the metric system was starting to become attractive for interstate uh, applicants, probably next financial year. So. This is something we definitely want to see uh, as, again, Canberra metrics have its advantages. It's very stable, but then the points need to go back to a reasonable scale. So this is one thing I want to share with you. Uh, the points will definitely start to drop and uh, just keep on uh, track of the uh, invitations. Uh, second thing we'd like to share is the potential uh, change or updates uh, of the uh, Canberra metrics guidelines. There are a few things we, we think at this stage, the Canberra guideline the requirement is a bit too high, uh, particularly when you're comparing every state government. So, um, and the government's realizing that, and they're actually uh, sending out the emails to agents and to and, uh, and other associates, uh, stakeholders, asking advice about the potential change of the guidelines. There's, there's a few points, a few potential directions I, which I can review. First is the English requirement. Uh, Canberra now also is still continuing require the applicant to have seven each in order to apply for the metrics, uh, except, you know, trade occupation, a few trade occupations. So if you don't have seven each, you can't apply for metrics. And till this moment, Canberra is probably the only state, it's actually the only state government asking the potential applicants to have seven each in order to launch an EOI pretty much. Then that's actually deter people from launching, launching the EOI because it's a point of the buy system uh, you know what you want to do you, you want to expand the pool you want to expand the potential uh, application numbers rather than keeping them you know out of uh, the metrics so this is some of the ways we hear it uh, across many many people saying seven each is a bit too high so that that I expecting will be one of the things uh, definitely taking into consideration remove the seven each English criteria which allowed any people who satisfy the minimum requirements of the Department of Home Affairs can lodge a metrics, at least you can lodge a metrics, then again, it's point invitation. So that was, I, I don't see any harms were due to the metric system. So that's one thing for the, uh, for the, 
for the uh, English requirement. Second thing is about the offshore ones. Uh, we started to see a lot of invitation giving to offshore ones, uh, 300, 400 persons giving to the offshore ones, but then again, we don't see a lot of people accepting the uh, uh, offshore ones. The reason why is, for example, the requirement is still too high. Take 491, for example, they're asking people to have three years working experience recognized by the assessing body. Uh, this is, again, pretty much the highest requirement in terms of working experience towards the offshore applicants. Some of the other state government only asking one year, some of the other state government do not even ask for working experience. So that's another thing uh, probably uh, have a chance to be reviewed. And in terms of 190 for offshore one job offer, which we can see the current requirement is 50 person for the, for the company. So the company needs to have 50 employees in order to be able to issue a, a contract or offer to the offshore applicant to satisfy the criteria. And we all know in Canberra, if the company have more than 50 employees, it won't be considered as a small company. You know, it's, it will be a big company. You don't see a lot of company have over 50 you know, employees, particularly if it's not you know, federal agencies or government agencies. We have a lot, lot of small business here, and 50, the, the employee of 50 is way too high. It will be reasonable to say 10 or 20. Then that's another prospective uh, uh, you know, uh, change we're expecting. There's, there, are, there are a few other advice or opinions collected by the public, for example, continuous employment. Uh, uh, the currently, the metrics are asking people to work for six months continuous without even a days of, 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 of breaks between. Um, this would be way too strict, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, during six months of time, the people can't ask for leave. If you ask for leave, you have to get medical. Even if you change your job, you have to make sure there's no gap between. So you are kind of tighten the employee to the employer, even they are being you know, abolished or uh, underpaid by the employer. You have to stick to your employer in order to satisfy the criteria. I think it will be more reasonable suggesting the client or the applicants you know, to show six months employment during the past 12 months and are currently employed with one of the employers. Because the purpose is to determine and to test the employability of the employer rather than the loyalty of the employer employee. That's what I'm saying. It's not about loyalty of the employee, it's about employability of the employee, uh, which you don't need to ask the employee, the applicant, to stick with one employer or stick to the employer for continuous six months without even a, a very short break, uh, break. I don't think that's very reasonable. So that's a few of uh, experts who we raise up and the other um, you know, associate state holders raise up to the uh, government. Um, so hopefully there will be some change to make um, um, camera metrics more accessible for the potential applicants. Uh, and in terms of the occupation list review, that's a potential as well. I think the potential will be uh, the government will add up a few categories of the occupation, which we can see in other state governments as well. They are adding back more occupations, uh, you know, get more people uh, you know, qualified or make them qualified uh, for the application in order to uh, use up all these uh, nominations available. So in the four, four and six months, we definitely see there's much, much better chance comparing the, 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 the the past six months and the companion past two years because we got lots of uh, applications that were available. One another thing we're starting to realize or starting to feel is the processing time. The processing time is starting to get, become a bit slower than what we see before. So you don't expect a case to be finalized within a week. Now we see some cases being finalized uh, in a ranging from two to four weeks because you, we, we, all, we all understand that there are more cases uh, need to be assessed, need to be processed. But then in the meantime, I think government is working on getting more people available on their team in order to keep the pace. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of invitation, a lot of application, not a lot of cases being approved by the end of this financial year. So anyway, uh, this is something, uh, you know, most of things are good, uh, uh, most things are positive, and we hope to see more and more people getting invitation, getting nomination, getting approval by the SD governments, and, and um, that's that's how we keep the uh, metric system attractive, and that's how we make Canberra still as one of the most popular destinations for migration purpose. So anyway, thank you for watching uh, the updates this week. And uh, if anything happened to the guidelines, or uh, we starting anything happened to the metric points, starting to drop to the next level, we will share the information with you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Victor, and I will see you next time.